Hey everybody, this is Nori from Smart Service, and today we're going to take a look at the latest and greatest features coming to you in version 113. Let's hop in and see what we got. All right, so the first thing on our list here today is going to be some label and terminology changes that are going to be happening in this version here. The reason that we did these things here is we wanted to make some of the features a little bit more clear as far as what they do in the program and some label changes for what those features are called seemed appropriate. With that being said, we're not changing how those features work. And I wanted to make sure this was the first thing in the video just for anybody that's just going to watch the first few minutes so they can make sure they get these label and terminology changes just so you don't get confused about why things look a little bit differently in the software. So let's go ahead and take a look at our list here. The first big change is going to happen over in our post work orders screen. So let's head over to office. And in the office screen, let's go ahead and head down to what mine is called post invoices. Now, that's not one of the new terminology changes. You can change that terminology in settings whenever you want. Uh, yours might say post work orders, post service tickets, but it'll be in the same place in the office screen. But let's go ahead and open that up here. And the first thing I want to point out is the do not invoice setting up there at the top middle of the screen. This was previously called the do not post button. The confusion with this button was we would tell you guys to check the do not post button if you did not want to make an invoice for this particular data service, and then to click the post button on the right to close that particular data service. Well, that's a little confusing, isn't it? So we wanted to make it more clear what the setting actually does. What it does is it prevents smart servers from making an invoice in QuickBooks for a particular data service. Those of you who are using this setting are typically using this when you have a job that lasts multiple days and you don't want to make an invoice for day one. You want to make an invoice at the end of, you know, day two or day three or however many days are on the job. At the end of the job, that's when you want to build the customer. So we made it so that the do not post button is now called do not invoice to more accurately represent what the setting does. If you haven't used this setting before, you can head over to smartservice.com forward slash webinar to check out any of our multi-day jobs webinars, which will detail the use of this setting. But just know that that setting has been changed to do not invoice now in version 113. Some other minor label changes here have happened in the settings window. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to head over to dashboard and then we're going to go into settings. So inside of the settings window, which not all of you may have access, if you can't click on the settings section here, it's just because you don't have the permission to, which is fine. Uh, you can talk to your smart service administrator to get in. But in settings under both the estimates and work order sections, we've made some changes. Let's go ahead and check out the estimate one first here. So the first thing that we notice here is that the terms conditions boxes at the bottom of this section here have changed their labels. Uh, these used to be called comments for the top and bottom of the estimate. And then the work order one had very similar boxes. We can take a look at those as well at the bottom there uh, that were comments for the left side and right side of the work order. In reality, both of these sections showed up at the bottom of the document. Uh, we wanted to make it clear as to what should go in there. What this stuff does is when you go to collect a signature via iFleet, or if you send the customer a copy of your estimate or work order, whatever it is from smart service or from iFleet, it can show them these terms and conditions. So to more accurately represent what these things should be, we named them terms and conditions. That way it's nice and clear what kind of information you should be putting in those boxes. Another change while we're on this screen here, and it's very minor, uh, but that is these check boxes over on the right hand side. These are for paper work orders. So if you've been using iFleet, you probably never messed with them before. But if you're not using iFleet, you always mess with these here when you want to set up your database. A lot of these were singular. A lot of them were plural. We went back and we changed it. So now it's just work order singular. Uh, so again, very minor label change. Nothing's changed with the features there. The last change that was in settings, at least, is going to happen for our iFleet customers over here in the iFleet section. We've changed this box right here, this overwrite office notes that was previously called enable job notes to be edited. So the confusion there was with that setting, whether or not you turned it on, the text could always create, modify, and delete their own notes. If this box was checked, it would allow the technician and iFleet to edit the office's notes. So we wanted to make that more clear here by changing the terminology to overwrite office notes. If you do decide to check this box, which if you've been through training recently, we do advise you not to check this box, uh, just as a kind of a precaution. Uh, what this does here is with this box checked, your technicians will have one note section for your office and field notes to show up in. So instead of having a existing notes and an add new notes section in iFleet, it would just be one section, which means that the technician could then change any notes that were entered by the office. Now, 
Generally, that has never been a really a malicious change by the technician. You know, people hit the backspace button or they overwrite something. Little things happen like that, especially when you're taking a bunch of notes and you're in a rush. Uh, so we always like to have it separate where the box is unchecked here and you've got an office note section and an add new note section in iFleet. But if you choose to have something different, we wanted to make it very clear what you were choosing in the settings section. So now the box says overwrite office notes. All right, and then moving on to our next label changes here. These actually happen on the left-hand side of our screen right here under the dashboard section. We've got a few changes in here. Primarily the search change. Uh, this used to say contacts, but the problem was you'd open up the contact section and the little tab here would say search. So we just made them both say search. So now the tab says search. In the menu, it says search. And at the top, it says search. And the tooltip's going to match. So we made it so that everyone can say search now, uh, whether you said contacts or contact search or search before. Now we've changed it to the label. It's just called search, and it's consistent throughout the program. Another place where we did this to avoid some confusion was the scheduler itself. Uh, so the scheduler being this big guy over here. We've changed this to be called scheduler. It was called scheduling. The confusion was if I looked at a work order, there's a scheduling tab in work orders. And that was getting confused with the scheduling big screen. Uh, so we've changed it so that this guy is now the scheduler. And the one inside here is scheduling. So you can tell the difference there when you're talking to our help desk techs, you're getting training, whether we're talking about the scheduling tab within a job or the scheduler where you put appointments on the calendar. Another good one is going to happen over in the report section. So let's head over there. So inside of reports on the left-hand side, you've got report types. This was previously saying report categories. The confusion was when you create a new report in Smart Service, you chose a report type. And then that report type, when you picked out one, would put this report that you created in one of these report categories on the left. Well, they're the same thing. So we've changed this. So that this says types. And when you create a report, it's going to say types there. Uh, for those of you who haven't done much in reporting, there's a great webinar over that, a few actually, uh, at smartservice.com forward slash webinar. But we've made it so that type now matches in both screens. You have some default report types that come with Smart Service where we built like prefab reports for you. But when you go to create your own, which you can do, uh, now you can make sure that you select the type that represents what kind of report you're going to pull. And then you'll be able to find that report in the reporting types over here on the side. The last label change that we're going to have in this version here is going to happen over in our mobile workforce section. Uh, this is something that you'd have access to if you have iFleet enabled in your database. But let's head over there. And that is this top option here, this location-based services. So this used to say real-time location-based services, but we've since fixed that. The reason being iFleet doesn't do real-time location tracking. What it does is called breadcrumb tracking. I can set your devices so that we can track the technician every five minutes while using the app. Uh, you can set it so it's a little less too if you just wanna track them when they sync their device or when they clock in or out or something like that. Uh, but the location-based services here, like I said, should be more accurately represented as a breadcrumb track. So we changed that real-time label here to more accurately represent and convey what the feature actually provides to your business. <laughs> All right, and the next item on our list here is going to be a big change for customers who are doing work that crosses midnight. Uh, a lot of you guys that are doing overnight work, whether that's uh, you know your actual industry and you always go out at night, uh, or if you have an on-call tech or an emergency after-hours line that your customers can call, sometimes those phone calls uh, span midnight. And we wanted to help you guys out when that happens. Previously, we had adopted what QuickBooks has, uh, which is timestamps cannot span midnight. That's something that QuickBooks does for their timesheets. They won't let you do it. So when we built Smart Service, we wouldn't let you do it either, but we figured out a smarter way to handle the situation. So what we've done now, if I open up the timestamps for this work order, we can take a look at these times here and we can see that I have spanned midnight for my times. So I started working at 10.19 p.m. and I finished at 12.34 a.m. Well, in iFleet, all I did was I hit start job at 1019, I did my work, and then finally, when I finished the job by hitting finalize, that was at 1234 in the morning the next day. Well, the iFleet user didn't notice this happened, but as that timestamp came back to your office, Smart Service is gonna automatically split that timestamp into what happened on, in this case, the 15th, versus what happened on the 16th, the following day, which is, you know, that time change. 
So now iFleet and Smart Service will work together to automatically cut off the time difference there for you. So we now can see that information and that's really helpful because these timestamps, whether or not you were posting them to QuickBooks, uh, will now be valid time entries in the database. If you ever came in here and you had a timestamp that was red, it was probably because that timestamp spanned midnight. Uh, so now that has been fixed for you. Now, you still want to keep an eye on your timestamps. Uh, sometimes employees will start a job one day, not realize they didn't finish it until the next day. Uh, and we might not want to associate all that time with it. So it's a good thing to take a look at. But if you span midnight, it's no longer a big deal. <laughs> And our next stop is going to be back here in the reporting section. And that is an option to track if an invoice was created in QuickBooks when you posted a job over here in Smart Service. This option is going to be available on history reports in Smart Service. So if I come into the history report section that I have and I go down to open up this report that I've got made for you here, I can see one who posted the record to QuickBooks. So I can use the posted by field. And I can also see this brand new QuickBooks transaction created field. This will tell me what transaction, if any, was created in QuickBooks when we posted this work order. So if I go in and take a look at this report now, let's go ahead and preview it. We can now get a good list of all the times where I didn't create an invoice in QuickBooks and what jobs those were for. <laughs> Right, and for the next item on our list here, it's going to be a big change to the sync names function. Uh, if you weren't previously aware of the sync names function or how it works up here at the top of your list by settings, there's an option to sync names. Now, the way you use this setting here, if I go to any customer, for example, or a work order or a location, uh, you've got this customer name or job name or location name field. This cannot be edited from Smart Service. QuickBooks says it's too important to let me change that information. So what you can do is you can make that change inside of QuickBooks to the record name, only the record name, don't change any of the other information, just the record name. And then you could bring that change into Smart Service by running this sync names. Now, a little bit ago, we had put in a new feature here for customers that had asked for it where you run the sync names and it checks for active and inactive records. So if the record was active or not in QuickBooks, we were still checking it to see if the name had changed recently. And that had slowed things down dramatically. If you have a really big customer list and you've got you know 20,000 customers and you got 5,000 inactive customers, well, that's an extra 5,000 records that you maybe didn't want to check. So we've made it so that now when you hit the sync names button, get your similar prompt here telling you, hey, we're gonna check for basically the stuff I just described and we hit yes. And it's gonna ask us this now, do you wanna check for active records only? So if you're only looking for customers that are currently active in QuickBooks where you've changed the name, we're gonna go ahead and hit yes on this prompt. If you wanna look for all customers with changed names, whether or not they are active, you can hit no on this prompt and it'll still run the sync names either way, uh, but you're just choosing whether or not you should be checking for active items in there. Uh, for those of you who have very large customer list, uh, the last time that I timed this setting out, it was about 400 uh, names per minute that it checks. So you can do the math on how big your customer list is here. Uh, but I'll go ahead and hit yes on mine. Let's check for any active names. Just to give you an idea here that it is a little bit faster when you run it with just active customers because hopefully there's less of those and there we're done. My database is pretty small. Again, it does about 400 uh, records individually. It's going to check those uh, per minute. But we made it so that's a little bit quicker there if you have a large list. All right, everybody. And the last big item of today here is going to be the serviced equipment view in history. Uh, this is something that we did for your technicians out in the field. A lot of them have been adopting the serviced equipment option in iFleet, which is great. Uh, I'm glad to see it. If you're not familiar with serviced equipment, you can check out our video on that at smartservice.com forward slash updates. Uh, but out here in iFleet now, when you go to look at history records for a given customer, so let's go ahead and open one of these up, you could always see the notes and the items in there. That's always been there. But at the bottom of this list now, I have a new serviced equipment section that's showing up. That is for any equipment that was marked as serviced on that previous visit. It'll now show up in here so I can see what equipment was serviced on this particular visit. Now, if you had a fillable PDF form or something else going on, uh, you always have that blue folder set up if you have Dropbox where I could go in there and view that equipment and stuff like that. 
Uh, but we made it so that quick and easy access, again, at the bottom of a history record, all the way down there, you're going to be able to see that service equipment section. For those of you who haven't used the service equipment feature yet, uh, you can go ahead and market equipment as services by going to the equipment list for the customer. There's just a service box over there on the left. That just lets you know that you worked on that thing for this day. So with these being marked on this work order, the next time I go to visit this customer, I will see both of those records marked as serviced inside of the history for this visit. All right, so there are a lot of other features that are going to be coming out in version 113, and you can check out our release notes for more information on that when the version is made available. You can also join our webinar where we'll be doing a live release preview. Uh, you can join that webinar at smartservice.com forward slash webinar. Come on into that. Like I said, it's free. You can ask questions about it, see what you're going to get in this next version here. Uh, as always, if you want to see more videos like this or catch up on what's been put in Smart Service over the uh, last few years here, you can visit us at smartservice.com forward slash updates for more information. And when the version is released, if you want to download a copy, you can head over to smartservice.com forward slash knowledge base. That's our online manual for Smart Service, where you'll also find written articles and other details about how to use these features. But that's everything I had for you today here, folks. I do appreciate you taking the time to watch our video, checking out what's going to be in version 113 of Smart Service, and we'll see you next time.